You know what I was thinking? Uh, one of the thoughts I had was, uh, Hi, buddy. Yeah, I one. I think it was that plate there. Yeah. I kept this in Chris's freezer last night, so I'll take that to my freezer this morning. Had that happen on you? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have. I wonder if water's different being out. I want to help him. I just, I just can't because I'm carrying stuff. There you go. That was a great place to have a picnic too. Just chill out here. You know, a romantic picnic. You could have a good romantic picnic here. I think this is where one of those backpacks would make sense. This was cold getting into it because it was all wet. <laughs> anyway, I'm in. Uh, there's a couple guys in the water, so I'm gonna jump in.
It's quite a trip though, wow. <laughs> Let's go a little bit more. feet are cold though and uh, I still haven't peed in this thing but I'm very close to peeing it right now <laughs> but I kind of want to do a couple more drops before I go in
Yeah. Yeah. Do a GoPro go pump. Yeah. It's called Raynard, Raynard's, Raynard syndrome. I've had that um, for my whole life actually, but I haven't seen it in a long time. There it is. Uh. I'll try, I'll try a few of them. PNW Samson, you guys, if you want to see this version of his side of the story for today, uh, check out his channel, PNW Samson. And uh, yeah, he was a good teacher for me today. Hey, buddy. You got me to see you guys, man. Yeah, you're that. welcome, man. Yeah. yeah. You got a good collection, good story. That's yeah. a that's Sen a sentimental man. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a pretty badass looking crab, man. It is, yeah. 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 They're they're beautiful. Um, yeah, I don't go too hard on them. You know, one or two a year, depending on the location. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. Amazing. Well, yeah. They're really vibrant at the surface, but as soon as you go down to ten meters, colors the for res the first color to fade. Yeah, I noticed um, they look pretty dark. They're like they're like gray underwater. Yeah. They blend right in. Yeah. You wouldn't think you wouldn't think so, but yeah, they they do a good job. Mm. Yeah, really cool. That is much different from the other crabs that I catch, you guys. And that thing feels like it's about 15 pounds, maybe, maybe more like. And he's hanging onto the rocks there pretty good. Yeah. That almost feels like 20, 20 pounds, I'd say. There you go. Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A true sharing the wild moment. Thank you, Maureen. Yeah, cheers. Well, I, I got to make crab cakes after all, you guys. So, there we go. This is, uh, this will be an interesting one. Um, so, you guys, this is called a Puget Sound King Crab. <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone covered that. I know what it is because I've been watching Chris's videos. Um, anyway, that was a... Uh, they usually spend... Anyway, I'm gonna put you guys down so I can navigate safely back. It is wet and rainy. Oh yeah. See you guys. Just said bye to the gang. Uh, we got some phone numbers and stuff, shared those. So, probably do some uh, diving with these guys in the future, I'm sure. And uh, I've got this, uh, Maureen gave me half of her king crab. Uh, it's a Puget Sound king crab, so. Um, it's got quite a smell to it. It's kind of sitting in its juices anyway. I'm just gonna try to take care of everything that I need to take care of really quickly. Uh, get this guy on ice as quick as possible. Uh, so I'm just gonna omit the filming for a bit. Mm. 
it's, it's getting there. Tell me, have you ever had a crab claw like that big? That is huge. Wouldn't want to mess with this guy. So spiky. So yeah, I'm down in uh, Cattle Point, Victoria. And it's a beautiful day today. We're just outside of the breeze here, barely. And uh, it seemed like a good place to come here and do, uh, do a little crab cook got molars in it, it's like, you know. That's pretty wild, you guys. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm uh, looking forward to trying this guy out. Should be, um, should be pretty good. I've heard good things about these guys. And I prepared the shell uh, last night at Steven's place. And it's already starting to discolor, but I took out all the insides. And it's got a really cool like looking interior to it. But that's quite a quite a unique shell. Like look at that. Three little spikes up there by the by the head. I think we'll give it a uh, ten minutes. I'll see how that does. I believe that's gonna be plenty of time there. Normally I cook my crabs for 10 minutes anyway. It seems to do a trick. This stuff is really yellow. It's really cool looking, actually. There we go. It's quite a bright orange color. Here, anyway, I'll just give that a little olive oil and some salt, and we'll give it a try. A little olive oil on there. That's really good, really good. Whenever I try something new like this, even though I just had these a couple days ago, the shellfish poisoning, stuff like that does spook me a little bit. I wanna educate myself as much as I can to understand sanitation closures and all that sort of stuff that goes with the algae blooms. So I think from time to time, nice little treat. I don't know, we'll see. I don't know how often I'll do that, but there you go. Man, I'm gonna need some industrial tool to get into this, I think. It was the easiest crab I've ever broken apart. It was literally like, break open a knuckle, push everything out. I didn't have to crack the shells or anything. It was just, you know, just came out of these holes right here. It was just push it out and it just came out super easily. Um, basically got like everything out of there. I might save onto this particular one, 
like this because that's uh, that's pretty cool these molars um, and you can see all these little fuzzy hairs around there that's pretty pretty far out anyway um, this stuff is epic like here I'm gonna have this whole piece the best crab I've ever had like that is so good like you don't have to do anything to it it's just take it out of the shell and eat it like that it's perfect put a little bit of butter on there and it'll be just awesome like that so I don't know I, um, I, I do want to make crab cakes but I almost want to leave some of it exactly the way it is I'm not sure I need to think about it it is so freaking good it is so freaking good it tastes oh my god it is so so delicious and that's uh you know that's a fair bit of meat out of that guy and that's only half of the crab marine's got the other half and those muscles were pretty good too um i'll just kind of keep keep an eye on myself for a little while i'm just nervous about eating shellfish like bivalves i did have shellfish allergies when i was young i had pretty severe closing of my throat um it wasn't like full-on anaphylactic but it was really scary like I had really shallow breathing really difficult to breathe and I was uh, I was young I was really afraid for my life when when that stuff started coming on but somehow through um, my aging um, I just accidentally had some at one point after avoiding it for the longest time and it was at a sushi restaurant nothing happened and I was like oh that's interesting um, so then I got curious and I started started to try it and I tried like a little piece of shrimp and I'd really monitor myself and see how things uh, did and um, so I kind of slowly progressed into it now harvesting it straight off the beach like we did yesterday that was a little bit different so for me I'm still being cautious about it but in any case that is one piece of meat right there that's just from inside one of those it's like bigger than my thumb. Maybe I could see myself having one of these a year. Just, you know, if I'm lucky enough to harvest one of these, just like one per year. That would be, that would be good. Maybe two, but one per year. That would be, this would be a nice thing to share. Um, with some friends too, and just, just, just have it like that. Just some butter and garlic on the side of the beach, right where we dove. <sighs> Maybe next time. I'm gonna take it over to Stephen and Jody's place where we're, we might make this into crab cakes. If I do, I'll share a couple little clips of that. Uh, I have done crab cakes before on here and I believe I showed that uh, quite a while ago. If I find the video, I'll link it up here somewhere so you guys can go see it. Uh, but I'll make this executive decision at their house because we might just want to have it as is. It's so amazing and uh, Everything's doing really well as far as the gear goes. I'm really happy with it. The only thing I wish I did differently was uh, on the hip belt that I have, which is right here. You can see these are zinc coated lead weights. Uh, for some reason, the guy in the dive shop was steering me towards these because you could buy them with heavier weights. So these ones, <clears throat> this one's two pound, this is three pound. And he was saying it's better to get bigger, bigger weights. He was trying to get me to get the, the big, big ones. But after diving with these guys with the weekend, uh, for free diving anyways, it's much more comfortable and it makes more sense to have smaller weights and more of them around. Plus, they have other weights that are two pounds, like this one on the side here that are completely coated in rubber. Um, and you can see like some of the zinc and maybe even the lead is starting to rub off and my concern is just through me handling it in and out of the van and all that stuff I don't want to have you know lead on my fingers and stuff like that so I'll probably go back and I don't know if they'll take the weights back but uh, I mean even if they take them back on a discount that would be great but I'm otherwise maybe I just have to sell those and uh, I'm gonna get the coated ones they're a little bit more money like those ones are I think are like $13 each and then the coated ones were $16 but over the long haul and I just it's worth it so um, 
I don't know when I'm going diving next, but stay tuned. Let me know if you really like this stuff, you guys. Uh, obviously, it's a little outside of what I've been normally doing. And um, yeah, let me, let me know what you think. I personally, I can't wait to spend more time out there and just being in the environment. I've got so much more to say about it, but I've said enough in this video, so we're just gonna leave it at that. And then, uh, I don't know, I stay tuned, but I'm definitely jumping in the water again. I can't wait. It's so, so much fun. Um, it, it, it's amazing. I, it's so freaking good. Like, <clears throat> I'm still gonna maybe do this a little bit, but not nearly as much as jumping in the water and going down and swimming and seeing the fish for my, with my own eyes and deciding whether or not it's a habitat that I want to harvest something from in the first place. Because when you're shore fishing or fishing from a boat, you can't really see what's going on beneath the water. I mean, you might catch something, you might not catch something. If you do, you're deciding. Generally for me, like when I go fishing, I'm fishing to catch something so that I can eat it. And that's my approach. I don't do catch and release very well. Um, I did that quite a bit, but I, I just don't want to do that and I don't want to participate in, in it. Um, but diving and going into the water and viewing the fish, not even hooking them at all. Like even, you know, you're, you're stressing them out by hooking them. This is why, why I don't like catch and release. You're fighting the fish, you take it out of its environment, it goes through this big process, you release it. They, if it's done correctly, they should be able to survive that type of experience and carry on. Um, but oftentimes they don't. Um, so it's, there's an argument either way on that side of that, that whole thing. Um, there's a lot of catch and release fishermen that say, you know, there is a, there is a real correct way of doing it. And you know, if you don't take it out of the water, there really is a good way of doing it, but still, I think it would be even better and even less of a, uh, an imposition on the fish if it's just me diving down, having a look at them, taking a camera, sharing it with you guys, sharing the wild, and just leaving them alone, just appreciating them where they at. And of course, I'm still going to harvest fish. I'm still going to harvest crab. But this time, maybe maybe I'll do it with my eyes in the environment and make those decisions while I'm down there. And uh, yeah, I don't know. But uh and on those crab traps that I have up on the roof of my van, I'm not sure that I'm going to fish with those anymore. Um, I'll probably do a video on um, on those specifically just to illustrate why I feel that way. But anyway, that's it. I'm going to say goodbye, you guys. Um, onwards and upwards. We'll bring you some different kind of content coming up. I've got a lot of stuff that I want to bring out, but uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. Bye for now. I'll be doing that again. That was really good. I'll be doing that again. Uh, yeah, at some point. I'm not gonna rush to that. There's so much else that I gotta do. See you later, guys.